Hi there, Michelle with Crafty Servings. So we're gonna make some spring chickens today. They're going to be bright and springy. You've seen all different versions of the fabric chickens on Pinterest or other places. So I'm gonna do my version. It's gonna be sort of similar. We're gonna add maybe a twist or two on it, but it's gonna be cute. So I'm gonna do two of them. I'm gonna do one that's a little bit rustic that we're gonna be stamping on the fabric and making that sort of cute. And we're gonna do a bright and springy teal one. And then I'll show you one that I did before. So come on, say hi, let me know you're out there. I'll also show you my newest kit I just put in my Etsy shop this morning. So say hi, let me know you're there. Hello, Carol, hello. So I'm going to go ahead and get started right away because it's going to take a little bit for cutting out and everything. Hello, Meg from New Jersey. So it is sort of overcast today. We're supposed to get rain, um, maybe a little freezing rain, but a little farther away from me. But um, I hope you have sunshine. Hello, um, Guadalupe. Guadalupe, good morning. Good morning, Vicky from Georgia. Is it nice by you? All right, let me show you the kit first. All right, is it, it's so cute. It's so cute. Maybe I'll wait with it. I'll, I'm gonna wait a few minutes with that. Let's just start cutting. All right, we'll wait till a few more get on and then I'll show you that kit because I only show it one time I think during here. All right, so I did cut out just some of my own patterns. They were so easy to do, honestly. I'll show you how I cut it. Well, honestly, it looks like a heart, doesn't it? I'll show you how I did it. So I took a pencil, and you can probably see see my line. No, I don't know if you can see my line or not. I literally just drew one, maybe a half of a egg shape, folded it in half and cut it. That's literally all I did and you got this and you're gonna end up cutting two of these for fabric thank you Kathy for passing me on good morning karma all right so again just traced it out a half a one folded the paper in half and then you get a perfect one they don't have to be perfect but all right I also cut out I just drew it again I didn't even draw it. I just honestly just cut it out. This is going to be for wings. Just cut out that. I drew a little bit. You can see my markings. Um, that is going to be for the comb. Now I didn't do um, a shape for what are those things that hang down? I know you know what they are. And then I just have just something simple. This is gonna be for the feet. So we're gonna add some cute little feet. Uh-oh, Cash is home and he got a haircut. <laughs> so he's no longer the furry hot beast. Hello, baby, hello. Hello, Mary. All right, so those are our pieces that we've got. And I'm going to cut them out of this, and we're going to stamp on this one, and then we're going to cut out a bright and furry. He is sweet. Hello, Beth. How are you? You guys, check out Beth at Rekindled Blessings. Oh, she's awesome. Her and Randy just do just awesome things, okay? So go check her out. Hello, Debbie. Thank you so much, Debbie. All right, so... They're easy patterns. Honestly, they're just easy to draw out. <laughs> My chicken is falling. I did one earlier. Do you want to see it? I'll show you what it's going to look like, okay? I'll show you what it's going to look like. And then I'll show you cutting it, putting it together. So I just have him. This is my little bit over here. We'll use this as a base so it's not so messy. We'll use this as a base. Is he cute? So you've seen some like this, you know, we just had to make sure we add the button. We added some legs. I'm going to be making this one a little different. I'm going to be adding some Juden in here, 
but he's going to be adorable. He's going to be adorable. So we're going to do bright and we're going to do a little bit rustic. That's what we're doing. All right. Let me just get this. Now it's easiest if you have pins. Um, if you don't have pins, use double stick tape to hold the fabric together. But I mean, most of you have stick pins. All right, we're going to cut out two of these. Thanks, Sharon. Thanks, Kathy. I need black and white to look like my Lucy. See? So on this one, we are doing, um, like I said, we're going to stamp on this fabric. I've done that many times. I stamp on fabric. I stamp on wood. Um, stamping isn't just for paper. All right, and we're going to do, this is the wings. We're going to do, we actually need four wings, but let's just do two at a time. Just because it's easier for me to cut out big pieces while I'm sitting here, I cut out a big swatch like that. Otherwise, I usually will cut around and save it on there. Thank you. Thank you, Barbara. Yeah, Cash isn't going to leave Larry's side right now. He's home today. So he took him for his haircut, which I know Cash is grateful for. I don't know how she does it with him. She always says he's good, but holy cow, I could never do it. All right, so I did one set of the wings. We're going to do one more set of wings. Anybody else have pages out there? Um, you want to put your crafting page there, check everybody out. How many of you have stamped on fabric before? I know I've showed it several times. It just adds such a cool look. It, you can make fabric look the way you want it. You can do it on colored fabric. You can do it on this plain fabric. I thought this is going to look a little more rustic, a little more farmhouse doing it this way. You could do the coffee grunge. I love using that too. Um, you could do that on the fabric. We're going to skip the coffee grunge and I'm going to make it look a little bit grungy with the, um, these stamps that I have. Just a little bit. All right, so we got two of them. It honestly goes together sort of fast. I do stitch them with thread and needle. Hello, Debbie. I'm good. You're not far from me at all right now. What are you doing over there? Are you getting ready for a sale? Debbie is on here. She's one of my team members on Magnolia. Um, and she's actually a local girl. Uh, she does estate sales. Um, her and her family. So I've stopped at a couple of her sales. I've got some cute buttons from some of her sales. All right, so we've got those cut out. Let's just cut out the quick this one. Hello, Sherry. So I just thought we need colorful and we need the more of the farmhouse look. All right, and let's just use the same patterns. All right, so I've got pretty many on here now. You want to see the newest kit in my Etsy shop? It's cute, and I do plan on doing it on a live. I'm just not sure when, hopefully soon. Let me get this pinned on here, and then I will, I'll show you the newest kit. And I have another one that's in the process of cutting right now that we'll see about trying to get in later too. 
it just with it so um, gloomy out today, you need this spring, right? Hello, Ruthie. Ruthie, how is it in California? She is in some of that major weather there. Are you guys staying safe? Ouch. Watch out so you don't poke yourself. It helps if you have a sharp scissor too. I didn't get my fabric scissor out. show you this real quick look at the newest so I won't be able to stand it up just because um, it needs to be glued in there and stuff but this will be your stand but look at how cute this is so it's it's an Easter egg tree and it's got all your different Easter eggs you can um, they fit up to the sizes like that one there you got the Easter eggs, you got littler ones, you got little plain ones, and you can either paint them, you could just do decoupage and not even use the patterns that are on some of them. But there's a bunch of little plain ones, and then you got this cute little bunny that goes in front of it, and that bunny stands up in, in one of them. The tree stands up in one of them, and they stand up together. So that's the newest one. I just put it in this morning. So I wanted to show y'all that really cute. Look at this one too. Isn't that one cute? Really pretty. So like I say, you don't even have to use the patterns that are on the eggs. You can just decoupage over them too. Aren't they cute? Yeah. So yeah, I think they are. All right, let's get that out of the way. There, that was, that was what I wanted to show you. Yeah, isn't it cute? It's an, it's an Easter egg tree. All right, I probably should only do one of these. I'm like, but I just want to show you bright and rustic. So you see the difference. Okay, again, these are the wings. And if you don't have pins, use double stick tape. Right, Debbie? And I think it's cute. So it's like 11 inches tall. It's pretty tall. So I'm going to include a Jenga block. I actually did that with my other bunnies that um, people were buying last week. I included Jenga blocks with them just to give that stability if it needs it. I don't know that it would even need it, but I usually like to include that. All right, wings for that one. You could even stamp on this colored one. It would be really cute stamping um, like a, a dark blue, a sapphire blue on here. That would be really, really cute and make a pattern. Why am I taking that out? <laughs> yeah, um, that would be really cute, like a sapphire blue ink on here. Oh gosh, that would be adorable. Didn't even think of that. I could just do one with that stamping. And this doesn't have to be perfect. Again, I just drew out, it looked like a half an egg. And folded the paper in half and cut it. And then when you open it up, it looks like that. Only I have a little, little point to it. You get a pointy egg. Uh-oh, Shelly, you lost me. They take out a notification, so please, please, yeah, check your notifications. That happens a lot. That happens a lot. 
All right, so we got that. We got the wings. We're done with them. We're going to, so for the bright one, now I'm just using felt. And this isn't a very thick felt. Um, you could use a little thicker, but it works. This is just the cheap felt you get probably at Walmart. You can get it anywhere, really. And this is the comb for the, for the head. So I'm using the red for here. You can even just do a heart shape or something. That would be cute. You wouldn't have to do. Um, you wouldn't have to do um, like and a shape like that. Even a heart would work. Now you also need. You guys tell me this all the time. What are those things that hang down? <laughs> I always forget. So I'm doing two of them. I think I need a little smaller. We're doing two of them. When is the party? The party. So my Magnolia Mystery Hostess party is next week, Thursday. 8 o'clock p.m. Central Standard Time. The party link event, though, is already set up. I set it up so if you guys want to order stencils and supplies prior to, um, for like if you're getting Valentine and stuff, you don't want to wait to the party and have a chip. You can order now already on that party link that's out on that event page. And you can look in my featured on Crafty Servings. You'll see that event page. So, um, go out and, and check that out. So you need a $30 minimum order, not counting shipping and tax to be qualified in the drawing for the mystery hostess gifts. Let's just fold this in half. So this, nope, nope, wrong color. This, we're gonna do this one on this fabric. Uh, it's like a deep burgundy. Cut two at one time here. A waddle. Why do I always forget that? I should Google it before I come on. Because every single time I make chickens or I don't know, like turkey, I always, I always forget. All right, so there's for that. There's the waddle for that one. Let's do the comb for this one. You know, as the thing is, is I grew up with chickens and turkeys and geese and ducks. We had like a little hobby farm and butchered our own chickens and chickens and geese and ducks. And did you ever make anything with the frames from Pea Lake? <gasps> You know what, Debbie? Okay, so Debbie again. I had mentioned Debbie is um, does estate sales. I actually gave them to a gift to some to somebody who helps me a lot at work. Um, she's just a sweet girl, and they started um, this last year. They have been for a while remodeling the barn to do barn weddings, and they just finished this year of getting it really set up and had a couple of them and I gave them to her for a gift because they'd be perfect in her barn um, in the area that I believe I'm not sure if she was putting it in the area where the bride and the bridesmaids get ready or or what so I actually ended up giving them away as a gift so I know she'll have awesome pictures in there for in that barn You have two ducks now, that's cute. All right, let's go ahead and get started. So this one, let's, we're gonna get this one stamped right away. We're gonna do front and back. It's easy and we're gonna make it look a little bit aged because I'm using these stamps. These are called background elements. 
So you can use these on cards. They're always a fun. Um, yeah, Debbie, and I know that I can't wait to go see. She, they did have an open house, and I didn't make it there. Um, but I will make it there and go and see. Thank you, Marjorie, for passing me on. All right, so I think we're going to use... We're going to do a couple of these. And I'm just using mocha. I use this one all the time. The ink on. And I'm just going to do this in a couple of places. And then we're going to use some of the others. Hello, Deborah. Okay, see how that's just adding that little bit of age look on there. We're gonna use a little more though. We're gonna do some other of these stamps. People use these on cards a lot for like a background. Like they can cut another piece of little card stock on top and put a little tag over it and you have that in a background. That's really cute how they do that we're making Jan we're making chickens we're making little chickens And this one we're making, we're actually making two. I'm making one that is going to be bright and colorful. And I'm making one that's going to look a little more rustic in sort of farmhouse. And I didn't grab my wipes. I'll be right back. I do need my wipes to wipe that off. So I just use baby wipes. Um, you can get stamp chamois. Um, you don't necessarily need to. Baby wipes work fine. Good morning, Janet. All right, let's take this one off. And let's add in, this one has little dots. Um, you can see that on there, those little dots. I'm gonna add that. Stamp is actually just a tad bit wider than what this is, this block, but it's only like a little dot on top. That doesn't matter to me. Okay, now we're just going to add some of these. We're just making it that little extra stamping. You, it's like making your own fabric. If you can't find a pattern that you like, see if you can stamp on it. Good morning, Janet. Let's just put a little on here and then we're gonna use some words yet. Where did you get the block? This block, I'm a maker with Close to My Heart, so you can get it. I do have a link up there for my Close to My Heart. You can get acrylic blocks also at any craft store. So um, these stamps are Close to My Heart that you wouldn't get somewhere else, but um, the you can get the acrylic blocks most anywhere. 
so I'm just going to add, a, I think just these words. We're going to add in a little bit. It doesn't matter what's it. My, this one is going to say chasing sunshine. We're going to add just a couple of those little stamps. And this is also a close to my heart. It's called chasing sunshine. And this one has the die cuts in. If you do the die cuts, I've shown some of them. Um, this also has die cuts in, but we're not going to do that today. Okay, let's just add this chasing sunshine onto that block. Are these shelf yes, they're shelf sitters. They're going to be shelf sitters. Thank you, Anne Marie. Yep, these are going to be shelf sitters. Just going to do now. Some of this is going to be covered up, honestly, because of decorating on there. But look at how cute that is! Chasing sunshine on my table now. Thanks, Diane. All right, done stamping. That's all there is. Now, honestly, we could have stamped on this fabric too. Like I would use like a dark sapphire blue. I have a dark blue stamp pad. That would be so cute stamped on there too. So. Um, but we'll do the one stamped and one not. All right, let's get them out of the way now. Keep clearing my room here. All right, we're going to start putting it together. Now you can glue it. I like the look of stitching. I just want to match these up, make sure, because it's probably a little bit different from front to back, because when I cut, when I drew it, I just drew it. It's not even on one side or the other, so that's why I want to make sure they match up. So those are the wings on there. Those are the wings on there. All right. These are going to make cute chickens. Okay. Let me just think. Okay, to to put it together now, this one we're going to have, oh, we're going to do the wings first. We're going to sew the wings first. And honestly, like I said, you could, um, you could use the glue if you want. But I like this extra little stitching that I think we're going to just use this light one. Gonna, this is what's going to make it look a little bit more country, a little rustic. And we're going to get our pins back out just to hold it together. You could also do, if you glue it, you could also do your stitch lines around it. That would be really cute. That would work just fine also with a permanent marker. All right, I have a wide enough needle so I can get this in here. All right, and I just knot off one end. And now we have to leave the bottom sort of open just because we have to make sure we um, have room to stuff it. But I'm going to start between the two layers. I'm just going to put the needle up in between the two layers because I've got that knot at the bottom and that way that will hide that knot. The knot will probably be hidden anyhow when you put it inside of here, but just in case. And all I'm going to do is just do a running stitch down and up and down and up. All the way around. That's why it, do, it does go fast. You can do, um, I think it's called a buttonhole stitch, where it goes all the way like around the outside of it. Um, you can certainly do that. You know, whatever you want to do. All 
have some pattern for these. Marjorie, I guess I didn't plan it. I could take a picture of them and just put out there that you can, um, I could post a picture of them. So honestly, like I said, I hand drew this pattern, this shape, and then I folded the paper in half and cut it. So that's how I got that. Um, same with these, they're, they're nothing hard, but I can take a picture of those and just post them. Now you don't want to gather this. If you pull too hard on the stitching, it'll gather this whole thing together. You don't want to do that. I do plan on doing that though at the bottom of these chickens. You're welcome, Marjorie. Yeah, I do plan on doing it at the bottom of the chickens. With it, the, the stitching is just a quick and easy stitch. You're just doing up and down through both layers. And here comes the rain. So I am going to get the stuffing out right away too to get that in there before we, we finish. So you can see that I, to me, that stitching adds a little bit extra to it. Um, we're just going to use a little fiber fill. in there and again this is going to be sewn inside of this seam so you're not going to see this bottom part so it, it doesn't have to be perfect closing it up either it's just I'm just gonna punch that up into those corners so it didn't take much much of that just finish closing her up Like I said, I think I am going to do both of these. If you don't mind, I'm going to do both so you can see the bright and colorful. I'm just going to knot this off on the bottom. You're not going to see that because it'll be sewn inside of the chicken. But I'll do the bright and colorful and this one if you don't mind. You like the stitches? And like I said, you honestly could um, do just the, get a permanent marker. And before you would even stuff it, do the permanent marker all the way around and then glue it. So there is that option also. Or if you want, if you're a sewer on a sewing machine, you could turn the pieces inside out and sew them together and then flip them out so that you don't have this rough looking seam that I'm making. You can certainly do that. Thank you, Sherry. So there's like multiple options you can do with this. Even if you um, do this, the stitch um, or you want to turn it inside out and you don't sew, that's fine. You could do turn it inside out, hot glue, and leave a little section of it open and then flip it outside the, the right way. There, there's just many ways. You don't necessarily need to even hand sew if you don't want to. Literally, I'm just putting it down and back up. When you're in a long place like this, you can do a couple of them in a row. All right, and let's get this one. See how quick that actually goes together? 
and honestly, this big one, it'll go just as fast. It, it doesn't take long. Just stuff a little stuffing in here. You don't have to overstuff it. Make sure you say hi as you're coming on. Let me know where you're from. Love seeing that. If you're watching a live or replay, I try and answer back after on a lot of them, but I get blocked a lot if I do too many. And too many lately doesn't seem like too many at all. But I love seeing where everybody's from. Okay, we'll talk to you later, later Mary. Okay, and then just close up this bottom a little bit. Again, this is going to be hidden. You're not going to see this bottom. So I honestly just put it through and put that needle through, through that loop, and that creates a knot. All right, so we got our two wings there. Um, this one, let's do a fun and colorful. What color do you think we should do on there? Um, I said we should be doing the blue stamping on there. How about if we do this variegated pink? Let's do that. Oh, a bright red would be cute too, though, with... Let's see if I have... I have a bright red. Let's do red. That'll be cute with that teal. Good morning, Vicki. All right, just have the wings to stitch, and then we'll be putting it all together. All of these, well, all the felt except for the comb will be just glued on, and the decorating is really easy. It doesn't take long. So the longest part is the stitching. It really won't take, it doesn't take that long. This would be really cute in pink too. Hello, Cheryl. Just jumping on. All the way around again. You can do several stitches at one time. When you pull it, just make sure you lay it back down flat. Rainy by you too. Yeah, it is rainy here today. I think all week, though, it's supposed to stay during the days in the 30s, I think, but it's supposed to be wet, I believe. Which, it could be worse. And it's winter. It's not, that's not normal for us. Illinois too. I wonder if most of the country probably has that, right? I know California was getting more today. Um, the South got yesterday just hammered, so prayers for all those. Um, there was a lot of devastation down there again. Hello, Paula. Okay, again, just make sure you're flattening that out. When you use a running stitch like this, it will tend to gather. You have to just make sure you stretch that out because we don't want that gathered there. There's other stitches I could show you that wouldn't do it, but they take longer and there's no purpose to them for something like this. This is just cute. I mean, I, well, I guess you could use the other. Um, there's a lot of different embroidery stitches that you could use to put it together, too. But this is just called, I believe it's a running stitch. All right, let's just stuff this one now. Twenty-nine by you, and that's. I think it's probably only the twenties right now by us too. But it, it's supposed to get just a little warmer, but yeah, wet. Right, Marjorie? It should be the coldest and snow. It This has been a crazy winter here. It's been a crazy winter. Mm 
Yeah, I guess I don't mind not having it when um, we have to drive in it, but I feel bad for the ice fisherman. I know my grandson loves ice fishing and he's in an ice fishing club. And they still find some places to ice fish, but like a lot around here, we have the little lake behind us that's open. It's not by you either, Paula. All right, so we're just gonna close this one up too. And we got one more wing to do then. And to knot it off again, I just put it through and when you've got that loop, just put your needle right through that loop. And that creates a knot and just do that a couple times. All right, one more wing and we put them together. Do you think so, Paula? I hope they're not. Our last year, we didn't have hardly any mosquitoes. It was crazy. The year before that, we had so many. It it was awful. It, it was awful. Um, so I don't know. I, I don't know how that goes. All right. So we'll just get this wing, and I'm excited to put them together. How many of you sew with a sewing machine or do you hand sew? Let me know. I mean, a lot of people don't do the machine. I know that. I have one and I, I love sewing. It's just it's time consuming for certain things. And I, I sew Halloween costumes for my grandkids. That's what I do mostly on that. Now I don't use it for many other things. No time. They say it needs to freeze some days to kill off the mosquitoes. Oh, see, I mean, we've had freezing. We did have freezing, just not in January. You would sew up, Marjorie? And honestly, like I said, sewing it and turning it inside out and have that straight seam, that would be really cute too. Or you could sew, leave it like this and do like a zigzag stitch around and not flip it. You could do that too. There's so many options. All right, let's just put this together. I'm anxious to see both of these put together. You don't need much stuffing at all for this project, um, not even for the bodies. Do you use your machine, but not for small pieces? Not for small pieces, yeah. I don't like little pieces. I The, the worst on a machine for me is when you're doing like tube shape, like long and skinny, and then you have to flip it out inside out. Uh oh, now I messed that one up. You have to flip it inside out. That's the hard, I hate flipping them inside out. I don't like that at all. Um, if it's wide enough, it's fine, but some of those are so skinny that I end up changing the pattern and just making it a little wider because it's so hard to turn it inside out. For hemming with hand sew crafting. Yeah, I think crafting is a lot your hand sewing. Like these kind of crafts. I think a lot of people, I just did it again. I just did it again. <laughs> I don't want two different stitches on here. I want a sing the same stitch all the way around. All right, let's do this the right way now. I you know, and I have a tube turner, but when those tubes are so little and your fabric is a little little bit bulky sometimes, those tube turners don't work either. All right, I'm not 
this off. And we're going to put our chickens together. All right, let's get, I think we have enough. No, probably not. I was going to say, I thought we had enough to put it all together in there, but probably not. Okay, let's, so let's go back to this one. And we need this in here. So we're going to put that comb in there. And I'm going to put a needle in there. I'm going to put the wings of the sides. So we're going to put a needle in there to hold them in place. This one up the side. And the needle to hold that in place. If only these chickens would. <laughs> with the eggs. Paula, you know, I saw the funniest meme this morning. I don't remember whose page it was. It might have been on Yvonne's page that just said it had this older lady old with um, holding this chicken. It was like sort of this old town kind of look and, and it said, I'll bet you, you men want w women that will catch chicken now, chickens now. You know, so it was just sort of cute instead of the cute little frilly girls. <laughs> I thought it was cute. All right, see how you'll come together. Let's glue, do this one right away. Just tuck that inside of there. And you could glue it if you don't, um, if you don't have pins, you could probably glue this in place too. But if you're gonna be using a needle on top of it and you put glue in there, you're going to have a hard time getting through that spot if if you plan on hand stitching after. So um, I think it's going to come down. So it, that's why you could glue it, but if you're going to hand stitch, you don't want to glue first. So that's why the needles work good. Sherry, I hope they're cute. I hope you like them. All right, and then we're just gonna pin the rest of this too. And I'm also going to, so I remember, I'm gonna put two pins for this bottom. I'm putting them up like that because I don't want to stitch it shut down there because of course we got to fill it. And then what I'm going to do is a separate little gathering stitch down there to gather that bottom part together. So let's do that on here too. So I don't forget and stitch the whole thing before I stuff it. Get a book in, get a bodkin. Even if it's skinny fat, even if it's a skinny tube, that's where I struggle. I have like a long embroidery hook that I do sometimes too. And I do have, I do have like almost like this long needle thing. I mean, I've tried multiple things. All right. This one, we were using this brown thread somewhere. So we're using the red thread. Here's our brown thread. It's just not letting you alone. You could put rice or beans. Yes, you could do that too. Rice or beans in here? Yes, absolutely you could. That would be cute too. I'm just going to use a little stuffing. Okay. All right, so starting at the bottom, just to hide that knot again, I'm just starting on the inside between the two layers. And putting that back, pulling that up in there. And just the running stitch all the way around. Okay. 
and when you get up to the wings and the comb you do have to make sure that you are catching those in this layer make sure that's laying flat when you're doing that the longer the string the more chance you have of knotting it but you want to make sure you get all the way around just keep pulling it This is where you can getting you've got a thicker layer now, so you have to work a little to get that in there. You get most ads at medical supply stores and my mom is a nurse and so she's a, well I'll have to think about that I'll have to look at what that is I'll have to look at what that is I said the only time I really sew is for Halloween costumes but there's a lot of costumes that want you to turn it around that makes those tubes I want to have to show you cutting the eyes too. The cut, I don't have a pattern for the eyes or the beak. Again, you want to make sure that you had it far enough that you're catching this comb or the rooster's comb to keep it in there. I love this stamping. I love this stamping on here. Um, that stamp pad is awesome. Hello, why it's whatnot. Hello. You guys check them out. I I love what they do too. I I love her page. Anybody else again um, have any pages out there? Make sure you either drop a link or you come on with your page name. I never mind that at all. So make sure you do that. We help each other out. Repair news and use. You do that too. Okay, well, I will have to check that out. All right, we're almost all the way around on this chicken. And then I'll show you, I think what I'll do is show you the finishing of this one because I already have the thread, the needle threaded with this color. So I'll show you this bottom part and then we'll go and finish off the bright one. Okay, I'm just trying to think, do I want, I th I'm going to knot this one off inside again, and then I'll show you the closing of it after. So I'm just going to catch that last thread, get that needle out of there. You have to leave that bottom open so you can stuff it. Now I'm using fiber fill, somebody else said too, you can certainly use um rice or beans that would be really really cute on here too okay. i'm just trying to catch those stitches inside of there so when i bring it through i just put the needle right through and that creates that knot so it's knotted it's not going to gather anymore i can leave this together because then i'll show you um how we're going to gather that bottom artesia acrylic paint box of 60. No, I haven't, Debbie. 
I have not. You don't need a lot of the fill either in here. You don't have to overstuff it. Just add some to be cute. That's going to be enough. You want to get it over like in the corners, and the little rounded corners in the top. It's cute, cute, cute. <clears throat> Just a little more. You can use scrap material or plastic bags. Yep, there are so many different things. Absolutely, you could. Those are good ideas too. All right, so um, now what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna keep it open like this because I wanna be able to gather this and make it sort of rounded on the bottom. So instead of going all the way around like I did, I'm not going to go across. I'm gonna start, um, you know what? Actually, I am gonna take that off. I'm gonna cut that off because I knotted it already. I'm going to put a knot on here just so I don't pull it through by accident, but you wouldn't necessarily have to knot that side either. So now I'm going to do that same running stitch, but I'm going to do it on the inside here and just on one side, and then I'm going to bring it all the way around onto the other side. And this is going to be what we're going to use to gather it. Like I said, don't, you don't pull this one all the way in because we're going to be pulling both ends to gather it. All the way around. Just looking at my battery and my phone too. I should have enough. I thought I would. All right, and then I'm going to bring it right onto this other side. And continue around. We're making cute little chickens. This is a stamped one and I also have a bright colored one here that that I'm making also. So I'm showing you a bright one and I'm showing this more of the farmhouse kind of rustic look. I think this will be my favorite. I like bright. I like the bright, but I like the rustic kind of farmhousey look. So that's where I do. Okay, so now I'm going to take my needle off of here. I won't need that color anymore. And all you're going to do is pull these two threads and pull them together, and it just creates that gather. And then you can tie that off. I did make the patterns. They were real easy. I'll show you again. Just it was just I just drew on a piece of paper. I drew this shape on a piece of paper. And I knew I would not be able to draw it on the other side to make it even. So all I did was take the paper and fold it in half. And that's how I got that. Same with the wings. I just I just drew it. Um, so I did say that maybe when I post a picture of these, I'll post a, just a screenshot of the pattern and you could maybe save it down as a, um, as a picture. So, you know, for this rustic one, you honestly... I don't know, this would be more of like your rustic or primitive. You wouldn't have to put eyes or beak or anything on. You could, which I'm going to, but you wouldn't necessarily have to. All right, so we got that. And I do have to cut the eyes and the beak yet. So what I'm gonna do is finish this one off on here. If you want to stick around after, I'll do the random act of kindness after we're done doing this one. If you want to stick around after and I finish the bright one, you certainly can. That way, if you want to hop off, you can. All right, so for 
the eyes on this one, I think that's too close to the color. Let's, I'm going to use this as a background for the eyes. This will be the white part of the eyes. On that one, I'm going to do bright white. I've just got to fold it together so that I get it even. I'm going to do two of them at the same time, and I'm just going to do a big oval. So again, no pattern, just cut it around. If you feel more comfortable having a pattern, then just go out on Microsoft Word or something like that, or your computer. This is almost too big though, I think. Yeah. Um, and just insert a shape and insert an oval shape. A little too big. Okay, I think that's better. We gotta make them a little goofy looking. All right, so we got that. Um, we need, let's do brown for the pupils. Did you hear that loud sigh? That wasn't Larry, that was Cash. You love chickens? Awesome. All right, and this I'm just cutting two smaller circles. I have it folded together so that I get the same size. And for the web feet on this one, we're going to cut two of these. Now this one I drew out two. And I just, I mean, honestly, it's not much of a shape. And I'm doing two of them, and I'll show you how we how uh, we put the feet on. So we need, now I've got this real thick jute. We're going to use this for the legs. And so that's the top. I'm just going to do a little pinch, pinch in the back and just do a little clip there. Now you're going to have to make it a little bit bigger because that, depending on the size of the string you use, that's got to fit in there. And then I'll tie a knot on the bottom. Stay on. Just tie it nice and tight. And then let's see, we're probably going to do it about this long. You can do these legs as long as you want. So I also have some of these wood beads. I'm not sure the size of them. I'm not sure the size. We're just going to add one of them onto here. You could do the whole leg in them if you want, but we're just going to do that. So we're going to make two of these now. Oh, awesome. I'm glad you're going to try that. It's just, it's honestly really simple and just cute. I'd love to see your take on it. And just tie this knot again. I like this thicker jute for this just because you see it then. Um, but if you have thinner or you have other kind of string, you know, use, use whatever you have. Use yarn. That. And another one of these 
Thanks. Thank you, Gabby. I'm glad, Diane. I hope you all make some of the stuff that I show you. See, that's just cute little feet. My cute little feet. All right, so we got the feet ready. We got these eyes. Um, oh, we need a beak. We just use one of these scraps. We need a beak. A triangle beak. And I got the waddles cut, so I think we're ready to put it together. We're going to get out some, okay, let's take, we're going to, are going to take another piece of this. We have to trim it down, we will. Hello, Mary, how are you doing? Margaret, I hand you a pattern. I drew a shape like this, and I folded the paper in half. And cut it open but I did say when I post like I don't have a pattern like for the eyes that I just eyeballed the eyeballed the eyes um, the beak I just cut the web feed I do have that here that when I post a picture of these I can post a picture of the shapes too that I did Diane thank you so much for the stars so I'm just taking my jute apart we're going to just add a little bit of texture in on the bottom do one more and we're going to have some raffia in there too see i like untwisting if you ha if you haven't followed me for a long time um, most of the time when I use jute, I untwist it and you get these little curly tendrils. They get even more curly, uh, you know, some of the smaller jute, um, it's really curly. All right, so we got that. Let's grab some raffia up here. More. If you have straw, use straw. So look at it. I mean, I probably have some in my stash from fall, but I'm just going to make this a messy. Gather that in. Just took all those ends in. Let's put some of this jute in here in different places. And now just take a skinny piece of jute here and tie it all together. You're hanging in there. Oh gosh, Mary. Yeah, I'm sorry for your loss. Pets really are part of the family. Okay, I'm just tying that. And I just added the jute just to add a little bit of extra texture in there and really make this messy. Right, let's put her together or him. Hello, Linda. All right, we're just going to add the eyeball. Using regular old hot glue here. Let's okay, the waddle is going to go under the beak, so I think we're going to do that off of here too. I had no idea what these really look like, so put a little 
dab of glue in here. This is the waddle. I don't know if it's supposed to be closer together. I don't know. And then we're going to put the beak right on top of there. And it hides where those two join together. You're welcome, Mary. I'm glad you got it. I'm glad you like it. And let's just put these, let's see, we're going to put this on first and then the eyes can go, then I can judge the eyes. Now if you want just little tiny bead eyes, you could do that too. I'm making it look sort of goofy with these eyeballs. Not the way she boy didn't carry Tim Holtz collage paper. Um, they might, they might, they might. Dip. I know they have some Tim Holtz products. Thank you, Sharon. Like I said, I'll stick on and do the teal one, finish that if people want to stick on. I just thought I would do this so that people can see. And you can even rough up these edges some too, if you want. You can go and pull strings and rough up the edges. All right, the feet, we're gonna have hanging down like that. So we'll just put a little line of glue. No, this isn't a kit, Liz. You can just you can just make it. The pattern, what I said I would do is when I post pictures of these chickens, I'll just post a picture of what I drew. I said I drew a half of an egg and then I cut, folded it in half and cut it. That made sure it was even. I just drew that for the wings. So it was pretty easy drawing. Um, this was the waddle. I just sort of traced, just drew that out. Um, so I could put a picture of that when I post this. So yeah, I didn't have a pattern. I just drew it. All right. Put them on there. Leave them up there for now. Okay, and then we're going to put this on here. Okay, and again, I want that messy, I want that spread out, and when I glue it on, I'll make sure that I spread that out as I'm doing it. Um, Spread that so that it gets in that glue. Measurements, I can tell you that in just a moment. I have a ruler right here. Um, I have a ruler right here. So honestly, yeah, if you start with a triangle and just do cur um, round the corners, that would work too. So I'll tell you what measurements in just a moment. Okay, and then you turn the feet the, the right way. Just turn your fabric. 
Okay, now we need a button. We need a button. Button, button, where's the button? This one I think I'm going to use a little bit darker button. You could use like the same color as the raffia, but um, this one, this button will match perfectly with it. So I just want to see where I'm going to put it. I could put it up by the comb, but I think I like it down on the bottom down here. We're going to put it on the bottom. Oh, Margaret, I'm sorry for your loss on your kitty, too. Put that there. This button matches perfectly with this. All right, let's just trim out some of this. This is the one I tied with. Isn't he cute? So you just put him on, put him on something like that. He's adorable. I love him. The fabric is perfect with the stamping on. Peggy, you're not actually watching replay. You're watching live. So I just finished it. I am going to finish up a bright one. If anybody wants to stick on, I'm going to finish up the bright one on yet. But I'll do a random act of kindness drawing right away just because we get that. Look at, look at the bat chasing sunshine. He just, he's just cute. Thank you. Thank you for all those hearts. Thank you. All right, so let's do a random act of kindness drawing. If you want to stick on, I will finish this bright one. I'll finish this bright one and um, show you how cute he can be. I really like the idea that if I would get a blue stamp, my blue stamp pad and stamp the same kind of stuff on here, that would be simply adorable too. But we'll do it without stamping this time. Thank you. Thank you, Vicki. Now you see chickens like this all the time, like the shapes of these chickens and stuff like that. I just want to add a little with the legs and I love the kind of fabric. Um, just You just do your own take on it a little bit. Um, but yeah, you see chickens everywhere. I uh, just wanted to do my own little take on it. So let's do a random act of kindness drawing. If you want to stick on and watch me do the teal one, finish that up. I already have it all this all stitch i just have to stitch and stuff and put it together too you can certainly do that so let's do the random act all right we've got margaret larson kinch private message me your mailing address and i'll get you happy mail the deal is you do a random act of kindness for someone then okay so that's the that's the deal i make it's a double blessing all right so if anybody wants to stick on I'm going to, let's see if I can't get him. I'm going to do this one yet. Get long enough. So if you want to stick on and chat, we can do that. Did you stitch by hand? I did. And I'll show you the stitching right now because I've got to stitch this one together. Um, I'm using embroidery. I guess I didn't say that at the beginning. I'm using embroidery floss. For me, it's just, it's, it's something colorful that I have. You can use any colors. On this one, I'm using the red. I had already cut two pieces of fabric. Also the wings, there were four pieces for the wings. And the waddle or the comb here was just out of red felt. I have this marked as with the pins down here because that's where I'm going to start and end because the bottom part we gather together. So for this basic running stitch I just start it down here and I've got a knot at the bottom and I just go down and up with it. Now 
earlier I was saying what you could do is you could hand you could sew it on a sewing machine um, and then turn it inside out if you don't don't want the rough edges to it you can certainly do that you can hot glue it um, if you want still maybe a little bit of the fun stitched look before you hot glue it uh, take a permanent magic marker and make your stitch marks so you can see it will look a little bit like stitches it, it won't stand up like these do but it would look a little bit like stitches all right now i'm to the part about by the wings so just make sure that it's feeling it's, it's thicker where these wings are you're you're catching that wing in so that that wing's going to stay in there Just sew it all the way around. I'm probably maybe a quarter inch in. Um, quarter inch in. Oh, I know people wanted the measurements. I know I'm gonna forget. Let me just grab my ruler over here or my tape measure. The height of this egg, I'll give you the height and the width of the egg that I cut out. It's, and like I said, it's sort of like an egg shape. It is about almost six and a half, almost six and a half inches tall and about five and a quarter inches wide at the bottom. So that's how, and yeah, that's how tall he is. That's when you put him together, he'll, well, he's probably about that tall too, because he's gathered up, but yet you still have that comb on top. So like I said, honestly, you could start with, um, an egg shape. And I just drew a half and folded the paper in half. It's easy to be able to get a even, just like you're doing hearts. You do the same thing. You do one side and fold it in. How cute he's looking. I love this red on the teal. You can use any colors you want. I have just cutest bright colors over here of fabrics I have. I wasn't sure which one I was going to do, so I grabbed several. And before I started here, I decided it was going to be this one. Oh, Linda, you're having not so nice weather up there. So is your weather similar to ours, though, Linda? Although ours is very unusual this year. Linda is in um, Canada. Linda, you have to check out the new kit I put. I actually have it on the table. I showed it earlier. The new kit I put in my Etsy shop today. It's a Easter egg tree. It's really cute. Isn't this cute? Hello. Hello everybody coming on. If you came on late, I already did this chicken and I'm just finishing up the teal chicken. So I did, had decided to finish that one up. It uses the same color thread that I don't have to rethread the needle. So I just finished that one up and said if anybody wanted to stick on to watch me finish this one. And I'm glad quite a few of you did. You do have some cute ones there, Linda. All right. See, look, I have a knot there. Okay, so I left the bottom open because that's where we're going to thread it. Make sure this isn't gathered. You don't need it gathered all the way around. Just make sure it's laying nice and flat. I'm going to knot this off on the bottom here because then we're going to gather that bottom part together. 
So I'm just catching the prior stitch and just a little fabric. So to knot it, yeah, literally I catch a little bit of that prior stitch and just go right through it. And then you've got this loop here. Just take your needle and go right through that loop. And when you pull it, it's, it's um, a knot. All right, so we're gonna stuff this and then I'll show you the gathering again. The little guy is falling over here. Cute, cute, cute. Like I said, this one was stamped fabric. This would be really cute having stamps, a stamping on here too. Even that same stamping would have been really cute on here. Just use uh, like the, like I said, a sapphire blue. I have a dark, sort of a dark blue stamp hat. That would have been really, really cute on here. Thanks, artist. All right, I think that's stuff good. So now I'm gonna take that same string that's left and I'm not gonna knot it off, but I'm gonna start, so you're only gonna do single sided. You're not going to sew it together in the bottom. You're gonna just start on one side of the fabric and leave, leave an end. You don't wanna pull that through and just do that same running stitch all the way around. Just don't pull this one through. And we're gonna do it in a circle all the way around this side and we're gonna continue on to the other side then. So what are you guys working on in crafting? Or what are you working on? If you, you want to tell me what you're working on. Or the other question is, what do you want to see me do? I'm always willing to try new things. So tell me what you want me to do. I said, I do plan on painting that kit that I have here, that, that Easter egg tree sometime. I do have to do another Magnolia this week. I have a Magnolia party next week, a mystery hostess party that I've got the event set up for out there. Um, so I'll do a Magnolia live this week. So do some stenciling with it. Valentine cards. I saw somebody doing wooden ones. They were so cute. They just had the wood rectangles and added onto there. All right. So I'm all the way around. So I just did that running stitch all the way around on that circle now. So that way we can pull it and it gathers it shut. And then we'll just tie it. So that's how you get it gathered at the bottom. You're working on being a new grandma. I'll betcha you are. Congratulations again. Pinning around with watercolors. I need to play more with that. I love using those watercolor brushes in paints and even with the, with the um, pencils. I do love that. All right. that one okay so we have its waddle um i thought i would have cut a beak i guess i didn't okay we have its waddle we're going to use a bright yellow beak we'll just use a triangle from on here
All right, so I just cut a triangle for the beak. You can use orange if you want to. Um, I'm using this for the feet too. Now the feet I did do a little pattern. It's a little, little funky. Maybe I should do, do it a little more like that. That looks a little, that looks like a duck foot though. All right, fold it in half. And I've got it folded in half so that I cut two right away at the same time. Just saves a little time. Gets it even. They're sort of similar then. All right. So these are the two feet. Um, we need white eyeballs. Or this will be the outside of the eye. And I'm just using felt on all of this. Like why are you brushing with pencils? I do like using with the pencils. Um, there's it's um, yeah watercolor. They're the watercolor pencils, so they're pencils, and you draw, and then you take the wet brushes, and when you rub over them, that spreads it out. <coughs> This is just that back of that eye. Each one could have its own little personality depending how you cut the eyes and how you cut the beaks. Still feel they're a little big. You can see this is not a pattern, this part at all. Just play with it. Just trying to get an oval here. <laughs> it's not working very good. Good. Let's use black for the beak. Awesome, Diane. I said I had tubs material downstairs. I can show you other fabrics that, uh, you know, absolutely. I mean, any fabric honestly would work for them. Any fabric would work. All right, I've got this folded in half too. I'm just doing two little black eyeballs. I have it folded in half so that I cut the same size. There, we got that. We got a beak. We got a waddle. Okay, so we got that. These are the feet. Um, <clears throat> All right, so for the feet, if you didn't see before, I'm just doing a little pinch in the back part and cutting a little hole in there. And then I'm taking my jute and feeding it through there. Oh, thank you, Diane. Honestly, like I said, these chicks, you see these chicks all over out on Pinterest. I mean, you just do a little different take on them. I love adding these little legs to them or the stamping. I love that stamped one. So you just add your own little take to them. All right, so got that. They're probably about yay long. one yeah Jane it'd be absolutely cute for Easter Easter or spring and this honestly Easter or spring 
all summer long in a farmhouse, especially these. And then I just tie a knot at the bottom to hold that foot on. I can call it a foot. The fine touch. I actually think I have some of them. All right, so let's just do the same size leg here. I got that done. Set him to the side. <clears throat> All right, and then also we'll take two of these beads. And you can use brighter colors. You can paint these. You can do whatever um, for the feet. I'll just use this. It matches with the jute. All right, let's start putting together. Um, now we just glue. I'm glad some of you stuck on. After I finish the other one. I want to make sure I put the beak on the right way on that one. Oh, thanks for the heart. Alright, I got that. Let's put the eyes together. If you don't have felt, you could probably get away with foam core too, or even just fabric. You know, sometimes you have thicker fabric or double up on the fabric. You could probably get away with that too. All right, we'll put these in here. And I just lightly laid that one down so I can shift it a little if I need to. That looks pretty good. Cute. He's cute. He's cute. All right, let's put these legs on. Juke itching me. All right, just put a line and we're just putting the legs out like this. It doesn't matter what direction this web foot is because you can turn it. So it doesn't matter. Just get your jute on. Let that sit. And let's do the his little nest. This one I won't put the jute in. I think we're okay with all the jute on this one. We'll just make it messy. It'd be cute adding a little bit of like colored ribbon in here too. That would be really cute. I'm just tucking some of these ends down in. Just 
Thanks, Liz. They both look different, right? They're a little bit different using the bright compared to the sort of dull, rustic kind of farmhouse look. To me, that's pretty. I love that look. These are fun, too. These are fun. Let's see this up a little bit. Just gonna put it right on the chicken. Oh, it's dripping, dripping, dripping. That way when I put it on, I can also move up some of these, get some of that shaped into there. These are just fun, just fun. You could have a whole line of them on a shelf. Make the eyeballs a little different on each, some googly eye or you know, that would be fun. Have a personality for each one. Thank you, Sherry. All right. Oh, we need a button. We need a button now. Um, All right. Let's do... Let's see, if I had a little red heart, that would be cute. Or a little red flower. Or my go-to handmade with love. something if you like there's so many things you could do with this this button I'm gonna put up here make sure the feet are turned the right way all right let me see if I have something I can boost these on one yeah, plan it out. You know what? If we add more glue back here, get this glued on, that'll give us a base. Thank you. That gives us more of a base. Okay, we got that one. Make sure that the feet are turned the way I want them. This was the one I did my practice one on. And then this is the stamped one that I did. Maybe we only have room for one. Oh, I know, we'll do this and this. And this. How's that? Aren't they cute? Put a small bag of sand in the bottom. Oh, yeah, you could definitely put, or beans or rice in the bottom. Yes, definitely. Thank you, Rebecca. Yeah, I think they turned out really, really cute. Let's turn this one in a little bit. Yeah, even just sitting on a flat shelf. Let's get this out of the way. This one. His little feet are sitting there. This guy is going to turn in a little bit. There, we've got a whole display here. So, I hope you like them. I hope you try them. Thank you, Sharon. Thank you. 
So yeah, they, they're just fun. I've seen where people have done the chickens, they even do hangers on them and they hang them off of a stick, like at different intervals. That would be really, really, really cute. Um, some hang them straight up and down like this, but when you put the feet on, you really can't do that. But honestly, hanging them on a stick would be adorable. Just setting them on a shelf. I'm going to start taking some of my snowmen down, I think. It doesn't feel like winter here. It doesn't. We ha we don't have hardly any snow. Um, but, you know, just putting them in a line on the shelf would be really cute. But yeah, I put them on a stick and hang that stick up. I saw somebody do that. I thought those would be really, really cute. Um, but yeah, there's just really cute ideas you can do with it. So, um, if you're on late, you want to see a picture of the newest kit I put in my Etsy shop, you can certainly do that. I'll post pictures when I post pictures of these. I will.